my concept of what's possible, which gives me hope, ultimately. But which leads me to the next question about the, the collective consciousness and our involvement. If we can imagine somebody's having an adverse time, and if we look around at people just experiencing life at the moment, things, anyone who's conscious at the moment of what's going on, everyone's feeling this, this pressure. We feel this some pressure deep down inside us. Time speeding up, we feel some kind of pressure, financial, emotional, political, however it may show itself. And this concept of survival versus creation, which I've heard you speak about before, and when we can choose either survival or creation, are we then affecting the super for other people to then pick up on and therefore be affected by? Well, first of all, we're always affecting the okay. field. Yeah. We're always sending the signal. Our thoughts are the electrical charge we send out in the field. Mm -hmm. Our emotions and feelings are the magnetic charge we send out in the field. And our thinking and feeling creates an electromagnetic field that affects every single atom in our life. Mm -hmm. Now, we know from research in the United States that if you take a group of people and you have them move into an elevated mood and focus on peace and meditate in a certain city, mm -hmm. the, crime, the crime rate in that city drops. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a, a natural phenomenon as, uh, that, that people have noticed uh, through their experimentation. The problem is that when they stop their meditation, the crime rate returns back to the ceiling value. Yeah. So we have three brains in place that allow us to go from thinking to doing to being. We can have an intention and, and set our mind to um, uh, uh, to a specific goal or a specific outcome. When we do that, we use the thinking brain. When we learn new information, when we embrace novel concepts, it's all wired in the thinking brain. So we could focus on peace and we could focus on calm and we could focus on creating different results. But the next state is to instruct the body to teach the body what the mind is intellectually understood. Okay. So now when we apply what we learn, we personalize it, we demonstrate it, we have to modify our behavior. We have to change something about ourselves to demonstrate peace or compassion. Yeah, yeah. Now when we actually do that, we change something about ourselves, we have a new experience. We say, hey, I didn't knee-jerk react mm -hmm. in that situation. Mm -hmm. I feel differently than I would have if I, if I reacted the other way. That new experience then produces a new emotion. And that new emotion now instructs the body with a signal chemically. And the body says, now I feel what this experience feels like because the end product of every experience is called a feeling or an emotion, mm -hmm. right? So if a person then gets about the business of demonstration yeah. of peace and they begin to apply it to their lives, now we have two brains working together. We have the mind and the body working together. We have behavior matching intention. We have action equal to thought. This is when we begin to start to see our life change in a more traumatic level. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough to do it once. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to repeat the experience independent of the external world. And when we're able to memorize a neurochemical state of mind and body and repeat it enough times, we move into that state of being. Mm -hmm. And we activate that third brain. Now, when we're in a state of being, and we're being it, Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is no thinking. Mm -hmm. There is no doing. We are in a congruent state in which that state of being is now affecting the quantum field. And when the mystics talked about just be it, mm -hmm. what they were really saying is have your mind and body on the same page. And when we're in that state of being now, we are beyond reproach. We are in a unified field. Mm -hmm. And then when we're in that state of being, we're affecting both everything in our personal life and we're contributing a huge message to the collective. Think about people in history that were able to do that. William mm -hmm. Wallace or Mahatma Gandhi, mm -hmm. any of the greats. Mm -hmm. They said, listen, I have an idea and I'm going to begin to act as if this idea is happening right now. I know anybody else can't experience it with their senses yet, mm -hmm. but to me, it's real and I can't compromise. Mind and body working together. Be the change you wish to see in the world. And when you're in a state of being, that's called leadership. Leadership is when mind and body are working together. Mm -hmm. Politics is when your mind is saying one thing and your body is doing something else. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, in that state of being, then the field responds to our being. The person then can say, 
I want to be happy. Mm -hmm. They're thinking intentionally they want to be happy, but they're being, you know, in a state of suffering because they've memorized that emotional state. Mm -hmm. Mind and body are working in opposition if they're being in a state of suffering. The field responds by creating circumstances in their life, events to reflect that state of being. Mm -hmm. So we have to then change both in our mind and in our bodies in order to have our life change. So having these three brains talking to each other, <coughs> so you have a thought, and that thought creates the, the body, that speaks to the body, and the body creates the, the actions. Are there any tips, and I hate using the word tips because it trivializes this kind of thing, but it also represents the tip of the iceberg, which means it's more information. What kind of things could you, what kind of tips could you give us? Like, because it feels like it's, it's great to be able to look at it and then you think, okay, but I really need to now start to implement it, even if it is on a minuscule level, and therefore practice and then get better sure, at it and then sure. multiply sure. that. Well,